All right, welcome back. Treadwell DPT, anatomy breakdown, muscle by muscle. Today we're covering the levator scapulae, one of those small but mighty muscles that does a lot more than most people realize. Underappreciated, not a popular gym muscle by any means, but is always very important and it definitely plays its role. If you're a clinician, trainer, student, or just someone sitting at home curious about muscle anatomy, this will be a good one for you. So let's dive in and see what we got. Now we've been doing muscle of the shoulder and upper extremity so far, but levator scapulae is really more of a neck muscle. It's a slender strap like muscle that runs from your upper C-spine down to your scapula. It sits pretty superficially along that lateral neck deep to those descending fibers of the trapezius, especially as you get closer to the shoulder. You can usually palpate along that side of your neck, especially when you shrug your shoulder or tilt your head to the side. Definitely could be one of those tight and tender muscles. People who come in with that tension or pathology of the neck and shoulder, I definitely do think levator scapulae pretty early for sure. So our levator scapulae originates on the transverse processes of C1 to C4. It connects our axial skeleton to our appendicular skeleton. It'll insert on the superior angle of the scapula and that general superior portion of the medial border of the scapula, all above that scapular spine. So we can look and easily see how it literally pull that top corner of the scapula upward and inward. Very clear and simple line of pull here. Just to reiterate, our levator scapula is gonna originate on the transverse processes of C1 to C4 and it'll insert onto the superior angle of the scapula. As the name might suggest, our primary action here is elevation of the scapula. Works together with those upper fibers of the traps and the rhomboids, so even with an accessory nerve injury, you'll be able to get that shrug move off. You'll also assist in that downward rotation of the scapula. And on top of that, if the scapula is fixed, the levator scapula acts to laterally flex and rotate the neck to that same side. So it's a muscle that crosses regions. It's both a neck mover and a scapular stabilizer. Levator scapulae shares its innervation with the rhomboids, being innervated by that dorsal scapular nerve, root C5, but with additional contributions from C3 and C4 via the cervical plexus. That's clinically important if you're thinking about nerve roots in the context of radiculopathy, or maybe a nerve injury, you want to remember those contributions from C3 and C4 as well. So that's roots C3, C4, and C5 all playing a key role in innervating that levator scapulae. Levator scapulae is innervated by dorsal scapular nerve with additional contributions from roots C3 and C4. Lock that in. We mentioned upper cross syndrome in the rhomboids video. This is also one of the more common muscles involved in that upper cross syndrome, but the opposite way. With the levator, we see more of that overworked, tightness, tension presentation. Generally paired with the upper trash, which we know hold a lot of that tightness and tension and stress as well. Similar action to the levator scapulae as well. This tightness pattern coupled with the weak, overstretched rhomboids 
and the weak overstretched lower traps as well as the tight pecs on the front the weak deep cervical flexors on the front will give us that upper cross syndrome presentation not uncommon to see tension or trigger point type stuff in this levator scapulae area with the forward head posture the quote unquote nerd neck people who are always looking down at their phones they'll often complain of that classic levator scapulae trigger point and it'll be along that upper medial scapular border so for that reason definitely a good needling muscle if you know what you're doing seen some really good results in the upper traps and that levator scapulae in the clinic Addressing levator scapulae tightness is almost always part of the comprehensive plan for neck pain, shoulder dysfunction, or even headaches. We always talk about everything being connected. During our shoulder evals, we ask about our neck symptoms. During neck evals, we ask about shoulder symptoms. This is exactly why levator is definitely one of those that could be causing symptoms in both areas. Treatment isn't just about stretching it. I've gone back and forth with the stretching, but it's funny, everyone thinks we've got the tight muscles up here, we've got to stretch a little bit and that'll solve every problem. Stretching definitely has its place, but you definitely need to work those muscles. Get those fibers moving correctly, get the blood pumping, pump out some of those inflammatory biomarkers, right? Train those surrounding stabilizers as well, improve the thoracic T-spine mobility. Postural education is really big as well. But I do think the trigger point stuff is super duper helpful in this area, for sure. Um, just getting that local tissue, that local environment back into homeostasis, very, very important. So all in all, definitely requires a multifaceted approach. So that's it, another one. You've got your breakdown of the levator scapulae. Small muscle, big time clinical considerations with this guy, so very important muscle as well. If you found this helpful, drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe for more because more is to come. Check out the rest of the series here, a lot of good hits. Clinically relevant anatomy deep dives. Thanks for watching, Treadle DPT, I'll catch you later.